and the stage icon that we know as Elvis Presley. What was it like watching that transition happen right here? That's an interesting question. It's a good observation because it is true that you have to separate the human entity, the fallible human entity, from this larger-than-life presence that rocked the world, really, and, and today is still such an iconic figure. Um, and it was, it was interesting to segue from this cute little guy in his little silk pajamas eating honeydew melon in the middle of the bed and dancing while he's eating his honeydew melon and, you know, the, the human entity that he was with the sweetness and the sense of humor and the loving nature that he had to go from that and the intimacy that you share with someone when you live with them to sitting in the audience dressed up and watching him in his stage attire you know, performing like, still it's the best show I've ever seen in my life. He was the most incredible performer ever in the history of entertainment. And I've seen just about everybody. He, he was amazing. So to go from the, the sweet little human entity that, you know, would share his deepest fears and feelings with me to watching this powerhouse of a performer, it was, a, you know, a little bit uh, daunting and, and you had to kind of wrap your head around it every time. But I say in my memoir that um, I, I wrote a couple of years ago, um, you know, we do people a tremendous disservice to put them on a pedestal, celebrated figures. If we put people on a pedestal, we don't allow them to be human. And it's a disservice to those celebrated people, those famous people. They're all still just very human. Sometimes some are more human than others, <laughs> you know, and more fallible than others. And I think sometimes the greater the fame, you know, the more it kind of etches um, a, a despair and, into you. It takes you away from what's normal. And that, I think that happened with Elvis. You know, he, he was, had to be, you know, kind of sequestered away and he wasn't able to mix and mingle with people. And so it, it, it led to his loneliness. Yeah, and, and loneliness, you know, having, at least he had you there, he had Lisa there, he had people that, that he loved right, right near him, all the, the gang of the guys and everything. Speaking of, of, of Lisa, how was Elvis's relationship? How, how was he, how was his father-daughter uh, relationship? Loving, if I had to sum it up in one word, it would be very loving. It was very affectionate toward Lisa, um, adored her. Um, he, he was just a very affectionate person. Elvis was, you know, he needed a lot of affection and he needed to give a lot of affection to the people that he loved, which is, accounts for his generous nature. But when Elvis would, like sometimes Elvis and Lisa and I, she was only four and a half when I was first with him, and he, sometimes he would just gather us in a big family bear hug and he called it mugging noggins. So he said, come over here and let me mug your noggin. And that would mean that you would press your forehead against his forehead and he would just, you know, go like that. And you could hear his teeth gritting. You know, he just really loved hard. He really loved hard and fierce and, and deeply. He was an incredibly affectionate guy and he adored that little girl. And, you know, he was not like the most disciplinarian <laughs> of fathers, you know. But I get that. I'm kind of a weenie mom myself <laughs> with my kids. You know, it's like, okay, you want that? And I'm a grandmother now. I have a, a little three-year-old granddaughter, and I'm that way with her. It's like, she loves coming to my house. My son says, yeah, because mom, you let her do anything, and you give her everything. <laughs> so but that's a grandmother's prerogative, right? No, that's... So he was a very loving, loving person. That's beautiful. That's beautiful.